Hello friends, my name is Gabby, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be doing a fun video talking about the lowest rated books that I've personally really enjoyed. Like this video could be called a number of different things like books other people hate that I love or just books that have the lowest ratings on Goodreads that I don't understand why. And I looked through my Goodreads shelf because I was curious. I was like, do I even have enough books to really like make a video like this? And I have 12 books just on this list. And I honestly feel like I could do a part two because I guess I didn't realize how many unpopular opinions I have about some books that are getting some really low ratings on Goodreads that I just don't understand why. I mean, some of them I can kind of see, you know, why other people might not enjoy it. But these are 12 books that I personally really enjoyed. I still think you should check them out even though they do have low ratings over on the Goodreads. But before we do jump into today's video, I wanted to say a huge thank you to the video sponsor for today, which is Royal Match. Royal Match is a match three puzzle mobile game. And it's so cute because you get to help the king in this game rebuild and redecorate his castle into like a really fun, colorful, bright castle. The game is completely free to download and it does not require internet to play this game. It's so cute because with every level you complete, you get to build something new in his castle. So there's kind of a reason to keep you playing this game, you know? Like, it's exciting to see the castle really come to life. You can also save the king from danger in his nightmares by solving certain puzzles. This is the perfect kind of game to play right before bed or anytime where you're just trying to relax for a little bit. And this is one of those games where, like, once you start it, it's so hard to stop because I would know because I played the first 40 levels in one night. It's like once you get sucked in, it's hard to stop because it's just so much fun. And the best part is that there is no ads in the game while you're playing the game, which is so nice. I feel like so many games these days just have a million advertisements when you're trying to play the game and it's very distracting, but I love that this game has no ads so you can just fully immerse yourself in the fun. So yeah, definitely be sure to click the link in my description to download the game and check it out and start playing it today. And thank you so much to Royal Match for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the books. All right, so jumping right into the list, the first book that I have on this list is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, and this book has a 3.06 out of 5 on Goodreads. This is the lowest rated book on my Goodreads that I have enjoyed the book, and I cannot believe that it has such low ratings. I mean, okay, I can kind of see why, you know, because this is a horror book and this one is a strange one. You know, this is definitely not for everyone. I can see why this book would probably make people really, you know, uncomfortable and confused on how they're supposed to feel. And I find that a lot of the lowest rated books that I've personally enjoyed myself, it's usually the horror books for some reason. I feel like horror is just really subjective and there's just gonna be some people that really find enjoyment in things like this. And then there's going to be a lot of people who probably don't and so it kind of does make sense to me but this is one of my personal favorite horror novellas it's actually really short this copy that I'm holding is actually a collection of even more short stories um, but the actual book things have gotten worse since we last spoke is only about a hundred pages so it is a pretty quick story and the thing that I think makes this story so unique is that it's almost entirely told with email exchanges between these two women and then it just shows both of them slowly kind of getting unhinged and things get chaotic and it is very weird it's very disturbing and it's intended to be that way so you know it's definitely not a book for everyone but I personally freaking loved it and I don't understand why it has that low of reviews like what the heck the next book on this list is going to be A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman which this one has a 3.21 out of 5 on Goodreads and this is another one where you know it's a short horror novella and apparently <laughs> I feel like short horror novellas are just really Really divisive that I've seen you know like it seems like people either really love them or hate them and this is one where I can see people not enjoying this book because the ending of this book is a little confusing it's a little bit weird it doesn't really fully explain a lot of things and I can see why people would get really frustrated with that but I freaking loved this one this was a five-star book for me I think about this book all the time and I honestly feel like I should reread it again because I just had so much fun with this but yeah this is just about these two teenagers who they're going on their first date on a lake when they discover this house at the bottom of a lake and there's all these creepy mysterious vibes in this book like I just oh my god I love it so much like some of the imagery in this book still sticks with me to this day like I still think about it and I go like Whoa! like all creeped out I think part of the reason why I personally love this one so much 
much is because I have a fear of like not being able to know what's down there underwater. Like just the whole idea of something being underwater and us not really knowing too much about it and what it is, that terrifies me. So that alone had me like so excited about this book. This next one on the list is the third lowest rated book on Goodreads that I've enjoyed and I I'm actually pretty surprised about this one. Like the other two, it's like, okay, it's horror. It's kind of weird. I guess I understand. But this one, Good Rich People. This one has a 3.27 out of five on Goodreads. Like I am absolutely shocked that this book has that low of ratings because this book is just a fun time. And this book, you know, it definitely has the like rich people murder vibes and maybe that's not everyone's like favorite thing. But also when you read a book called Good Rich People, I'm not really sure what you're like expecting going into it, but I don't know. I just personally had such a blast with this book. I mean, this book is just one of those kind of books where we follow this rich asshole bitch and we just kind of get to experience her life and all of the ridiculous shenanigans that she gets up to and it involves murder and murdery things. And this family, like it has the most unlikable, you know, cast of characters that we're following, but it's just the most entertaining shit. Like I just had so much fun reading this, but I can see if people don't like to follow unlikable characters, I can see why people are maybe not enjoying this one as much but I still can't believe it has as low of ratings as it does like I was expecting this one to have maybe like a 3.5 out of 5 on Goodreads like that would make more sense to me but a 3.2 like what the heck and I think the ending is chaotic and ridiculous but like in a fun way you know like I feel like that's exactly what this book was trying to be like I don't think this book is trying to be anything more serious like it knows exactly what it is you know Oof, the next one on this list is an all-time favorite of mine because it's The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay and even though this is an all-time favorite of mine. I know exactly why people don't enjoy this book. This one does have a 3.31 out of 5 on Goodreads right now, which is pretty dang low. You know, it is. But this book is just one of my all-time favorite books. And in this story, we're following this gay couple who is out at their cabin in the woods with their adopted daughter, Wen, when these four people show up and they're, it's like a home invasion kind of story. And they said that they need their help with something. And if they don't help, then the world is going to end, essentially. And so there's a lot of questions in this book, you know, because what the heck? They're wondering if these guys could be telling the truth or if this is just some kind of like freaky ass scam to get them to do something that they really don't want to do. And it's absolutely terrifying, you know, like home invasion stories just like freak me the fuck out. Like, first of all, yeah, that's scary, period. But then there's like so much more happening in this story too that's just so eerie and creepy and I love it. I love it so much. I know a lot of people have an issue with the way that this book ends, but I personally love the way this book ends. Like this has one of my favorite book endings of all time. And I'm so excited about the fact that M. Night Shyamalan is literally adapting a movie of this as we speak. Like it's in the works, it's happening. I think it's set to come out early next year and I cannot wait. Like M. Night Shyamalan? That's freaking wild. Like that is just so exciting. And so I, I love this. I had such a great time with this book. I don't understand all the hate. All right, the next book on this list is going to be The Hole. This one is getting a 3.39 out of 5 on Goodreads right now. And this one was like a four star book for me. So I don't totally understand why it's getting as low of reviews as it is. It's a Korean novel and it's, a lot of people are describing this as the Korean version of Misery because it does have a very similar premise to Misery by Stephen King. And it's about, you know, this husband and wife who get into a car accident and then from what I remember the wife dies and then the husband is going to be getting taken care of by his mother-in-law by like you know his wife's mom and she's just a little bit unhinged you know she's very like Annie Wilkes kind of like vibes and this book I feel like maybe people went into this book with the wrong expectations and that's why it's getting a little bit of lower reviews because I think saying that this is like the Korean version of Misery I think it might give people the wrong impression because this book is not nearly as as horrific as you might imagine. Like it doesn't seem like it fits perfectly into the horror genre because it definitely has a more like literary style of writing. But I feel like this book is just as effective for me as Misery was. I mean, I gave this book and Misery the same rating with four stars. Like I really enjoyed both for their own individual things. But I feel like the whole is a lot more psychological in like in how it's scary. Whereas I feel like Misery, it's a lot more, you know, obvious. Like the horror in that book is a lot more like in your face 
and it's obvious, you know, but with the whole, I feel like this one is a little bit more like psychologically scary and really touches on grief and loneliness and those kind of things that are really horrific and scary, but it's just not as obvious. And so I can see why people are saying like, oh, the whole is really boring or it just didn't live up to the expectations. I can see that for sure, but I still think it's worth checking out. The next book on this list is going to be The Deep by Nick Cutter, which I was really surprised to find that this book only has a 3.4 out of 5 on Goodreads because Nick Cutter is, you know, one of my faves. He's the author of The Troop, if you didn't know. This book, again, ties into my fear of, like, underwater, you know? Like, this whole book takes place 27 miles under the surface of the ocean. And this book is scary, too, because there's this, like, strange plague that's going around on Earth. And so we're following this guy who is going to the bottom of the ocean to try to get some kind of cure for this plague that's currently going on on Earth because they've discovered this like weird stuff that's at the bottom of the ocean that could potentially be a cure for this plague. And so this book is just wildly fascinating. I feel like maybe the reason this book is getting the lower reviews is because the ending is a little out there. You know, the ending is a little weird. It's a little unexpected. It's a little confusing. And I feel like I've just noticed that people seem to rate books lower when the ending just isn't as satisfying as they want it to be. And so I can definitely see that, you know, but I would not let the low ratings steer you away from this book because this book is wildly fascinating. It's so interesting. And this book honestly reminded me of so many other things that I love, you know, like including Annihilation, Arrival, like it definitely has those kind of creepy, you know, vibes to it and the fact that it takes place almost entirely underwater just adds to how terrifying I find this story. Like, it's just so good. And, you know, because it's written by Nick Cutter, it's very, you know, graphic and visual and just so well written. And so I would definitely still recommend checking out this book if it sounds at all interesting to you. All right, the next book on this list is The Other Black Girl, which I was also surprised to find out that this book only has a 3.42 out of 5 on Goodreads. This was actually one of my book troop picks from last year. We read this in June together last year, and this book is definitely a little wild, you know? It's a little bit out there, especially towards the end of this book. This book follows this woman who works at a book publisher, and she is the only black woman working in this office, and then another black woman comes and starts working at the office, and she's the other black girl, and then there's all this tension, like some stuff starts happening to our protagonist when she's working there, like she starts getting these notes that are like, you need to leave this book publisher now, and she doesn't know what's going on, if she's being threatened, if she's being blackmailed. There's just all of these creepy things happening. I feel like out of all of the books these days that are being compared to Get Out, I feel like this one was a pretty solid comparison to Get Out just because it definitely had that same feeling at some points throughout this book that you get when you watch the movie Get Out. And I also thought that this had some really great commentary in it as well. I feel like maybe why some people though aren't enjoying this one as much is because our protagonist in this book can be a little bit frustrating at times. Like I didn't always 100% agree with all of the decisions that she made or all of the thoughts that she had in this book. But at the same time, you know, I think this book was a really interesting concept and I thought the ending of this book was a little wild and unexpected, but in like a really fun way. And then this next book also had a wild and chaotic ending and that is The Bright Lands by John Fram. This one also has a 3.42 out of 5 on Goodreads, which I guess, you know, the ratings on this one are kind of surprising, but also kind of not that surprising because of the way this book ends. You know, I feel like really when there's a book that has has like a wild, crazy, chaotic ending. It's really divisive among people, I think. And this book is um, this thriller horror novel where we're following this guy named Joel who's gay and he's living in New York and his younger brother is a football player living in Texas and his younger brother goes missing and so he has to come back to this small conservative town in Texas where he, you know, he left a few years ago. And now there's weird things happening in the town that are unexplained with like these football players going missing. I loved the small town vibes in this book and I just love the overall feeling of like dread and like uncomfortable feelings that I had when I read this. I feel like maybe why this book is getting lower reviews is because there is a huge cast of characters in this book and it can be a little bit overwhelming at times to be honest. But I also do think there's a reason for all of the character point of views in this book. And also, you know, like I said, the ending of this book is totally wild. Like this is one of those books where after you finish it, you're like, what the fuck? And then you have to go and like look up, you know, author interviews and different kinds of things online to see what other people are thinking about it so that you can like connect the dots better. And I personally love that. Like I live for that shit. I love 
when a book or a movie or a TV show can make me stop and think and go and like look up, you know, talk to other fans and be like, what did you think of this? And what did you think of that? Like, I personally love that so much. And so I love the ending of this book. But again, I can see how people might be frustrated by it because they want the more satisfying ending with all of their answers answered. And I get it, but I loved it. All right, the next one on this list is going to be Reprieve by James Han Matson, which this book only has a 3.43 out of 5 on Goodreads like absolutely shocking but I think the reason why this one's getting lower reviews is because this book is being mismarketed you know which is actually kind of a shame because I think that this book is incredible like it's so well written it's so freaking good but I think people are really going into this with the wrong mindset because of the way this book is being marketed because you know the inside description of this book just makes it seem like it's going to be a lot more intense and thrilling than the majority of the story actually is because it says it's centered around a brutal killing that takes place in a full contact haunted escape room. So like that's a lot of, you know, words that get people excited like, oh my god, there's a brutal killing in a haunted escape room. Haunted and escape room. So it makes it sound like it's going to be this crazy wild thing and this book is actually like, I feel like half of the book takes place in the escape room and then the other half of the book we do get a lot of like flashbacks of these characters we get their backgrounds we get their stories and this book is just so well written you know in the description it also does say that this is a provocative exploration of capitalism hate politics racial fetishism and our obsession with fear as entertainment and i agree with all of those things and i think this book definitely does a great job with exploring all of those things but i do feel like this book is written more like a literary fiction that takes place in a haunted escape room and like some horrific things happen but for the most part it reads like literary fiction which I did not mind like I personally thought the writing in this book was really good even though it is a slow burn you know like this book is pretty long it's like nearly 400 pages and it's a slow burn like it takes a long time for things to really start happening in this book and getting interesting I think the payoff is just so worth it like the ending of this book gave me chills all right the next book on this list is going to be Pearl by Josh Mallerman. This one currently has a 3.44 out of 5 on Goodreads and this book is just so chaotic and so unexpected and Pearl is this horror novel that's about this pig named Pearl that can brainwash people into, you know, committing acts of violence against, you know, either other people or themselves. And it sounds crazy because it is. Like, this book is ridiculous. It's chaotic. It's over the top. But I don't know. I had a lot of fun reading this one. Like, it wasn't a perfect book for me. I'm pretty sure I gave it around four stars. But in a way, I'm kind of surprised that this book is getting as low ratings as it is. But it also, in a way, it's like, am I really that surprised? Because, you know, we're talking a freaking pig that can, like, brainwash people into committing acts of murder. Like, yeah, it does sound ridiculous. But I freaking enjoyed it. Like, I don't know. It was so weird and so bizarre. I feel like Josh Mallerman is one of those authors that's really, like, hit or miss for people, it seems. And he's also, like, hit or miss for me at times as well. Like, there's just some of his books that don't really hit as hard for me. But, like, this one, A House at the Bottom of a Lake and Bird Box, like those are all some really great horror novels in my opinion. And it's definitely unique, you know, a freaking murdery pig, like who would have thought? All right, the second to last book on this list is going to be Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This one currently has a 3.47 out of five on Goodreads. And once again, we have a short little horror novella that has one of the most chaotic and wild endings. I can see why people are divided on this one. You know, I really can, but this book is fascinating to me and it's one of my favorite horror novellas because of the concept you know i don't know about you but mannequins absolutely terrifying like so creepy oh my god it freaks me out you know even thinking about them and so in this book we're following this group of friends who they have this idea to prank one of their friends who works at a movie theater and they're basically going to be bringing bringing this mannequin into the movie theater to kind of like prank the employee there to make them think it's another person that's like at the movie theater but it's actually just a mannequin and it's supposed to be like a really fun joke and then the mannequin fucking gets up and walks out of the theater and they're all just like um um, what? I feel like even with that description of this book, I feel like it's hard to even explain though what this book is and what it's about and like the direction this book goes in is still something that's like unexpected and hard to explain. 
but this book was just wild. It was so good. Like it was so weird and I just loved it so much. All right. And then the last book that I have on this list is The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb, which this one has a 3.50 out of 5 on Goodreads. So, you know, this one's not too low of a rating, but I'm still kind of surprised that it has that low of ratings, you know, because this book was in my most you know, top favorite books of last year. This book was in my top 15 favorites of 2021. And so I was surprised by how many people ended up hating this book. Like I was getting so many messages last year with people being like, I usually trust your taste, but I don't understand your opinion on The Hunting Wives or like, it doesn't make sense that you like this book. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Because this book was so much fun. I mean, we're talking a main character who's a stalker essentially, which, you know, that's usually my favorite things anyways in thrillers. Like I love following from a stalker point of view. It's just like 10 times more entertaining for me. And then she gets obsessed with this like group of moms and in particular the one mom, Margot. She just gets really obsessed with this woman and then she becomes entangled in the lives of this small group of Texas moms. And it's just like super entertaining shit for me. Like, I don't know, I really enjoyed this. I feel like, you know, after reading the new May Cobb book this year and absolutely hating it and giving it one star, it definitely has me questioning if I would enjoy this book as much if I had read it now. But at the time, this was exactly what I like needed and what I was looking for. I thought it was like the perfect fun summer thriller. But do be warned that there's a lot of people who really hate this book. All right, those are all of the books that are some of the lowest rated books on my Goodreads that I personally enjoy and I would still recommend you checking them out even though they're rated pretty low. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I check books on Goodreads, if it has lower than like a 3.6, then I really start to hesitate, you know, because I'm like, oof, that's pretty low. Like, is it something that I'm gonna enjoy if that many people are disliking it. I don't know, maybe 3.6 sounds like it's you know, a little bit too high for me to be saying that that's like low ratings, but a 3.6 average or lower makes it seem like most of the people reading it are not enjoying it if they're giving it like three stars or lower. And so it really makes me hesitate, you know? And then I'm wondering like now, I'm like, okay, I should definitely not even care what the Goodreads rating is if so many of some of my favorite books have lower than a 3.5 on Goodreads, you know? So I was just wondering like, you know, you can leave a comment to let me know, but I was wondering, does the Goodreads rating put you off from reading something if you're interested in reading it? Like for example, if you were really interested in reading a book, but then you look it up on Goodreads and it has like a 3.3 .3 out of 5 average, are you like, oh, mm, never mind, like hard pass, or you like push it off, you know, so like you read it a little bit later than you wanted to because of the lower ratings? Like, I would just love to know if the Goodreads rating average has any kind of impact on whether or not you want to read that book because in some ways it does for me and I feel like I need to change that about myself because clearly um, some of my all-time favorite books have lower ratings on Goodreads and I do feel like most of the time it is the thriller and horror genre that is more divided like this because there's not a single romance book in this list so I feel like maybe for romances it's okay for me to want to read books that are only like a 3.7 or higher on Goodreads but I feel like maybe for thriller and horror books I should just completely not even acknowledge the rating you know like maybe it does differ per genre, you know, and you could also let me know that if that's the case for you. I don't know. I'm just really curious about that. So let me know. Also, let me know if you've also enjoyed any of the books on this list and you're also kind of shocked by the lower ratings or let me know which books you've enjoyed that get lower ratings that you're baffled by the low ratings. I would love to know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you would like to see a round two of something like this in the future where, you know, because there are a handful of books that are around the 3.5 you know, rating on Goodreads that I personally love. So I could do a round two of this if you would like to see that. Or I could do like the reverse of this and do books that are rated incredibly high on my Goodreads that I don't understand why. So I could do the reverse of like, here are some hyped popular books that I don't enjoy. So I could always do the reverse of that as well. So let me know if you would like to see that. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.